This is TNC Sports Tonight and I am Rainer Garbutt along with Misael Gonzalez. Tonight, we'll be taking a look at the highlights from the PLB game from last weekend. Also, the highlights from the games played over the weekend in the BEBL uh, basketball tournament. In the first segment of our show tonight, we'll be talking about the situation between Port Loyola FC and Verde, a heated one, one that is known all over the country. So me and myself will be breaking down that for you with all the information that we have gathered so far, we'll be sharing it with you. And also the situation that took place on Friday night inside the Civic Center in the BEBL, with the game between Hurricanes and uh, Western Ballers. I will be talking about that in the second segment of our show. So you don't want to go nowhere, Stay with us, we'll be back with our first segment tonight. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the results from the PLB last weekend games. As we take a quick recap of what's uh, week number six in the Premier League of Belize, we have interesting results because in San Pedro it was a huge matchup between San Pedro Pirates and Port Loyola, with Port Loyola getting that one to nothing victory against uh, the Pirates. And uh, inside the Michael Ashcroft Stadium, it was uh, Altitude getting that 3 nothing lead against Internacional Football Club, uh, formerly known as uh, Bandits. Those were the two Saturday games. We go on to Sunday, also two matches. Very interesting progress at home. They uh, manage a draw against uh, Verdes FC on a 2-2 draw and in Carl Ramos Stadium in Dangriga, Wagia got their sixth loss in consecutive manner and they lost against Benke United on a 2-1 score as the actions of Benke United for that moment they were in third spot on the standings. Let's uh, quickly take a look on highlights. Let's see what happened on both games that were covered here exclusively on the national channel and Next Gen TV. We take a look. First opportunity for the Pirates was courtesy of Devon McKean, but uh, with the save was uh, Gillette goalkeeper, or that Stillet goalkeeper of uh, uh, Port Loyola. Was the first opportunity for the hometown. Uh, then up next, uh, Port Loyola with the crucial opportunity would be uh, an important one by Gilroy Thornton. Milson Moura was keen there on the defensive side. Moises Hernandez finds Facundo Garnier inside the box. He shakes a defender, sends it high of goal defended by Gillette. And another opportunity for the Pirates uh, as Argentina and Facundo Garnier had that opportunity inside the box. Sport Loyola will also send a warning via Xian Young who had a uh, very good game was sending his shot out wide. Gilroy Thornton has another opportunity here, sends it. No reaction by Selvin Sagastume, but luckily the shot was off target. Michael Palacio with a brilliant control, an exceptional finish, a powerful shot, not the best celebration there by Palacio, but he secures the victory for Port Loyola inside the Amberger Stadium as two of the best shaped teams went ahead on as it was Port Loyola to get the lead on 66 minutes via the top goal scorer of the tournament, Michael Palacio would secure his sixth goal against uh, San Pedro Pirates. Another opportunity this time it was Andres Makin against Selvin Sagastume. San Pedro Pirates will have another last one here, but it ended up on a foul committed by Jorge Savila against goalkeeper Gillet. They are committing the foul was uh, the striker for San Pedro Pirates. Uh, 83 minutes, another opportunity for Port Loyola inside the box. Uh, Michael Palacio towards Shan Young. He had enough time and space to secure a goal as he takes a shot and goes wide. Victory nonetheless for Port Loyola inside the Amberger Stadium as they remain the only team unbeaten so far in the tournament. As we go on to Sunday, Wagi against the Benke United in the Carl Ramos Stadium. An important match that Wagi wanted their first win and they were close as they secured their first goal 
against uh, Benke United early in the game. Six minutes uh, had elapsed, but Benke United will have a response. Carlton Thomas sending uh, a brilliant pass towards uh, Benke United, and it was the equalizer on 36 minutes. Uh, Benke was equalizing the game 30 minutes later. As brilliant pass there between the lines by Carlton Fugu Thomas uh, and Benke United secured the draw just before the half the game was 1 1. Then another opportunity on 59 minutes, center eluding everyone, and it would be the Paraguayan player securing via slight deflection via the header sending the score 2-1 to one and securing another victory on the road for Benke United but Wayagia would come close on scoring via multiple opportunities they had here everyone dancing with number 23 and Yusuf Guerra would send this opportunity to the corner kick as the number 23 eluded three players on the play and then took a shot that Yusuf Guerra sent out onto the corner kick. Wagia was uh, hungry for that equalizer and they came very close to securing but nonetheless final whistle and a 2-1 to one important victory on the road for Benke United who is in top four positions uh, they're closing on playoffs let's take a quick look at the standing so far we had some changes due to a protest that Verdes won so San Pedro Pirates take that first spot Port Loyola is second with 11 points Verdes third with 11 Benke United is fourth with 10 Altitude is fifth with nine also uh, with nine points on sixth position sits Progreso FC International Football Club has two points and Wagia zero points out of six matches losing six of them for Wagia so far upcoming games for the weekend we have two for Saturday and two for Sunday Saturday San Pedro Pirates against Benke United and Berger Stadium 7 p.m. Bandits or International Football Club against Wagia also inside Isidoro Beaton Stadium 7.30 p.m. start and for Sunday, Port Layola against Progreso at 4 p.m. inside the Marian Jones. And inside the Norman Brasser Stadium, monster matchup, Verdes against Altitude. Also with many CONCACAF implications for Verdes against Altitude. So what we'll do, we'll go to a break. And when we come back, Michelle, we'll get into the heated part of yeah. our conversation tonight. <laughs> That's right. Um, so let's take that break and then we'll be back. We are back, Reina Gabat with Misael. Misael, the most heated <laughs> discussion we will time, have tonight. No? The situation between Port Loyola FC, after the win against San Pedro, they moved up in the first position. It's the best team. The best team in the PLB. Yeah. Verdes launched a protest and the protest went in favor of Verdes. And so now Port Loyola sits in the third position with 11 points instead of 14 points. Yeah. But, it, but it all, it all um, derived from the transfer of uh, this player from Argentina. That's right. And his name is Jonathan Moschini. Yeah, I, I, I remember uh, having a quick word with him for that Verdes victory uh, or that Port Loyola victory mm -hmm. against Verde. So he is he's the cause, uh, the cause of, of the dispute or, or this protest. But, uh, you know, a protest that, that no one knew, you know, I, I took the initiative to post uh, the standings doing the math and then it resulted that I was wrong. But because, you know, no, no information was given uh, right. onto this protest. Mm -hmm. But it's good to know, know you know, that, that there was a protest. Uh, and, you know, it, it seems that it caught everybody off guard because, you know, some Port Loyola players also commenting there that, that they were not aware of this. So, you know, those are the things. That, it's not that a team cannot launch protests, you know, it's how, the, how it's done, you know. It, it seems that it's always done behind the scene and that's what, you know, at the end ends up causing some confusion and also some eruption there on the fans also. Well, from the information that I went out and gathered, it wasn't done behind the scene when it comes to the PLB family, meaning all clubs 
that are presently uh, be part mm -hmm. of the of the um, PLB. Because what I have in front of me here um, states, I got a, a, a WhatsApp message from Port Loyola stating that the protest for Verdes mm -hmm. was against the player mm -hmm. and against the, the, the player, right? Mm -hmm. No, against the goals okay. and not the player. Yeah, yeah. I correct it, right? But what I have here in front of me that I received from Verdi <coughs> says, we are also protesting the use of Jonathan Moschini, okay. who used number 40 in the game on Sunday. This player was written on the official game roster. However, we have established that this international transfer came to another league club. And for him to be legally registered for Port Loyola, a domestic transfer would have to be completed mm -hmm. when it is understood that Port Loyola FC does not have an active TMS. The TMS is a transfer match system. Mm -hmm. So, so basically, this player was, was registered, you know, so, so everyone one is, is also following along. This player was registered with Cesar Ridge. No. Since, or, or what, a according or to was him re registered under? According to the information that I have gotten, that because of the fact that Port Loyola went to Mr. Ian Jones, okay. and Mr. Ian Jones is the, T, is the country's TMS manager, mm -hmm. But for the protest to be finalized, it had to go to FIFA. Okay. And it's a process. It's not a one-day process, <coughs> yeah. a two-day. It's a five-day process, and it could be drawn out even longer. It seems that Port Loyola thought that the Football Federation of Belize and Mr. Ian Jones were dragging their feet. Mm -hmm. Now, I have document here by the way of an email where Mr. Ian Jones, he was communicating with the ITC manager of Port Loyola about the situation. Mm -hmm. And so they went to Mr. Kenneth Budna, the manager of then Bandit Sports, mm -hmm. who is very versed with both systems, the transfer mat system and the international transfer system, certificate, sorry. What Mr. Budna requested from Port Loyola is a letter stating that they're giving Mr. Budna the go ahead to do the transfer for them to go mm -hmm. through the process what i found out that that is illegal that is illegal because port Loyola, they were invited to a seminar mm for the transfer mat system now when you are a certified manager of the system you are given a password that password represents your club and so when mr budna went through and did the the, the, the transfer and everything, it went through the bandit sports system. So that's what FIFA saw. That's what Conga mm -hmm. Cap saw. Not through mm -hmm. the Port Loyola system. So that in itself. Oh, so then, hence the reason he, it seems like he's registered under an ex, another team. Correct. Because in, in all, you know, Correct. he was registered by a, a former bandits manager. So it seems like he's a bandits, bandits player. player. That's um, correct. No, this is that that this yeah, right there is where uh, all the and you know that's that that's also a thing. You know, many of the times matches are won inside the the, the the pitch. You know, but then also comes the behind the scenes. You know, and and it's not the first time that this happens in football. You know, bigger teams have lost uh, points due to uh, unelegible players being lined up and sometimes not for not being registered or transferred simply because they carried on a suspension from previous years and they were uh, you know started then that 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 is also a thing to protest uh, so protest is not wrong it's on the basis that it was done or you know i had people confused you know but it, it's a, a way of, of getting points back you know it's right it's also paying attention to those details uh, and you know verdes being the bigger club or the club with more experience with the international players also with the international exposure uh, they were keen on that situation uh, you know, if they couldn't, because, you know, it's very difficult to replay a match if they were, you know, protesting the outcome of that game due to referee or what's not. But, you know, what they, you know, end up finding is, was what, you know, proposed Correct. this, you know, the kind of eruption. But, you know, when no one is aware of all the information, you know, then, then it causes that huge confusion because it seems that Verdes is being, you know, on no, no sportsmanship from Verdes. But then, you know, it's three points that on the race for CONCACAF, they needed more than anybody right now. So, uh, 
you know, there, there is all something those details come. right, Misael. And there is something very important that that was tied into this whole equation because where the where where the protests went, it should have went there, but then it should have forward to another department. So the protests went to the PLB disciplinary committee. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a disciplinary action. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it it's not like a player received. Uh, a straight red card for mm -hmm. fighting and then mm -hmm. the disciplinary committee will yeah. say, oh, well, one game plus two games or whatever the case may be. It should have channeled through the disciplinary committee and then on to the PLB organizing committee. Mm -hmm. That's where the decision was supposed to have been made, but the disciplinary, disciplinary committee made the decision that the player were legible to play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but then again, you know, it, it, that's that's the details that, you know, it's it's, it's unfair for a team to pay, to pay the, the three points. For example, you know, if the player was eligible to play or he was in the roster, then you know, Port Loyola would, would line him up and would give him playing opportunity. Uh, and then you know, who is to pay for, for those mistakes? Also, at the end of the day, it's Port Loyola, you know, but if, if a player is in the roster, then you know, if you see a player with red, then you know that the player is ineligible un to play. And he wouldn't play, but you know, he was on the Port Loyola roster and that gave Port Loyola the impression that you know the guy is, is good to go and you know now the consequences are, are, are tough for them being that they lost uh, three points on the table you know for, for an unelegible player and now right. we know the situation why he is unelegible uh, and so forth you know but you know those those details are also those details have to be published you know it's those times when things are done inside a circle are, are gone you know People are watching, you know, people yeah. are following yeah. Premier League of Belize and for them to come and, and say that those are internal matters and that's, that, that's, that's not how the things are done because, you know, transparency is good. The protest, now I understand the protest and I support the protest because, you know, you know the details now, but when there is no details, what do you expect people to, to support if, if they see like an act of on, on sportsmanship, then you know those, those things need to be corrected. Yeah, when, when it becomes a levels, yeah. when, it, when it becomes a drawn out pro process, then it seems like like it, it's it's a bias um, decision. Yeah, you know. But those but, are processes. You know, it will take some time, and right. it wouldn't be a from right. today to tomorrow decision. And because of the fact that Port Loyola thought that maybe to get the the transform mat system in place would have take maybe a day or two, yeah. not so. Uh, Not so. And what I was made to understand also that if it if the pro, if the protest would have went to the correct uh, body, the PLB the PLB organizing committee, two decisions could have been made. One, the points could have been taken away from Port Loyola. Two, Port Loyola could have been fined a handsome fee, but still get the points. Get the points. Yeah. Right. And and then you see how important it is for the teams to remain uh, updated on all those stuff. You know, it's not just uh, lining up your eleven inside the field. It's also the work you you keep doing uh, outside of it. And you know, Progreso will have few problems there. They have no international player. You know, they have. Uh, 100% Belizean uh, players, so they won't have that, that problem of transfer with international transfer, but right. they might have with internal transfers because that also is, is, is an issue, you know, players registering or signing double contracts or, or stuff like that. So, you know, you are never uh, totally out of the loop when it comes to uh, these situations. But, you know, you, you have to educate yourself as team managers and as team owners uh, of what is permitting and what is not so you don't lose these this points on, on the table, you know. Now, let's, let's, let me read a part of this. And this um, was a conversation between Mr. Leeton St. Clair, who is the manager of um, Port Loyola, and Mr. Ian Jones. And the... And Mr. Miguel was CC in this. But it says, Mr. Sinclair, on Saturday you informed me that you would be the TMS manager. I have since made application to FIFA help this. And you should get an email with instruction in a timely manner. This letter came from Ian Jones, the country. The country TMS manager. Um, right. It goes on to say, uh, Misael, that it says, a conch has been created. You would then be free to make to make her a secondary TMS manager by your club. They are talking about uh, the young lady um, Aisha, who is also affiliated as a second manager 
of Port Loyola FC. And so what this is telling me, uh, it says, um, this is Mr. St. Clair. Um, he says, I am not sure, but the proper authorities are also included in your correspondent and should answer and guide me properly. I am hoping that it is done. So that, that's his response. That's his response to Mr. Ian Jones. And so it showed me right here that Mr. Ian Jones did put things into place. Mm -hmm. If Port followed up, followed up on, on what was put into place for them, I am not sure. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the thing to see. Uh, but, but it seems that they didn't if they, if they lost the, 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 or they lost to a protest because of uh, you know, the, the transfer issue being that a third party made that transfer and not, and not officially uh, Port Loyola. So, you know, many, many things will, will come out of this, you know. I'm sure Port Loyola will, will probably try and, and file an appeal and, and stuff. But, you know, it, it goes to show and, and also goes to educate uh, many other teams on, on the matter, you know, yes. to be very careful yes. when transferring yes. or when giving other people the permission to conduct business on your behalf. You know, you have to be uh, aware of those things that it can end up haunting you and especially when it comes to uh, clubs that have that intelligence to spot those, uh, you know, errors and, uh, and capitalize on them, then you have to be very, very careful. And, and one of the reasons why FIFA emphasized now on this transfer mat system is because I was made to understand also that they are using this system to do human trafficking. Mm. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, a very, it's a very serious situation. Yeah. So now when you become a certified, um, a certified transfer match system manager, you are giving that password that you are the only one privy to the mm -hmm. password. So you can go in to the FIFA, um, I forget what they call it. It's a FIFA database though. FIFA Connect? FIFA Connect. Mm -hmm. So you have access to the FIFA Connect to do your transfer and get the right the procedure done right. And I and and from what you know I am sensing <laughs> is that Port Loyola they they have the ITC in um you know they have that um active but it's a transfer mat system mm. that they don't have active. Yeah. Very very sad for them, you know, being that they have the the, the uh, human power to, to be on top of the league, but you know on, on the sideline or the persons you know conducting the business and ensuring that everything is on point, then they they are failing to the organization in a sense because you know you you can't allow this to happen. You lose three points innocently due to a transfer. No, what I what I would want to say to um, Port Loyola. Is not to pull out, not to pull out of the of the um, not to pull out of the tournament. Yeah, that would, that, 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 would be, that, that wouldn't be the the, the you know the, the best thing to do for them. You know, if it, it goes down to auto auto criticism, you know, if you need to accept if if the fault is is yours, it's not the players, obviously, you know. But right. you know, you need you need to convince your players. We failed. We didn't do this. This is right. If if it goes down by what we see in the release and so forth, mm -hmm. then then it should be that that management should you know gather their players. You know what? We are the ones here to blame. Please play it to the maximum potential because Port Lyle has demonstrated that they have they, shown that they are the best team. Yeah, so far the they are the, the best, best team, team unbeaten on the field. So, you know, then they have to keep their heads up, competing at the highest level and ensuring that these things don't happen to them again. Then, you know, management has to take, take on that, that if they are responsible for this, uh, losing this protest because of, of the transfer situation, then they need to, to you know, get the team together uh, and uh, you know, bring them back together in that competing spirit and, and have them you know, continue competing because they, they are the best team so far. So we have an official letter from, from the FFB and I want to put the, the letter up on the screen um, so we can go through this letter. And it says right there, it starts from number one. It says, Port Loyola FC was informed of the procedure to have the international player registered in FIFA Connect. That, this was done by the TMS FFB country manager and the FFB competition director.
Port Loyola FC was working with the TMS FFB country manager to get the player duly registered. However, the process took some time, and we explained that. Mm -hmm. So, as Port Loyola FC decided to accelerate the system by contacting Kenneth Bodna, the manager of Bandit Sports, who is the TMS manager for Bandit Sports, and who could have helped him faster than the TMS FFB country manager. Mm -hmm. So, they thought that. Going from on to a more quicker solution would have avoided the problem and then it cost them more, more problems. Right, right. So number four says, Kenneth Bodna, Bandit Sports Manager, have knowledge of the system and knowing the importance of the information that is generated by the system, requested a formal letter from Port Loyola FC before applying for an ITC for the foreign player, which was outside of his normal authority and against the formal process. Yeah, no, no, that, that, that explains it. Uh, you know, no, it's, it, it should be clear to, to everyone, you know, and, and that's the things uh, that no one was, was aware of and, and it continues to be a mystery until, you know, uh, you got a hold of that letter and things, uh, now some some light is shed on on, on that situation, and you know, now we we get to understand that you know it's it's uh, not Verdes or not because it's Verdes they want to protest, but because they have the facts together and and they manage to you know to to find the error and, and capitalize on it. Right, and so like I, like I say, I, I want to encourage um, Port La Port Layola FC to continue the season. You know, suck it up. Um, if it's management fault, then management should up. up apologize to the, to the players correct and, and you know take take charge of the situation you know don't be saying well we did this we did this mm -hmm. we did this and and you didn't do it be honest you know tell the truth and move on you have a dynamic thing going on here port la ul ifc you have a dynamic thing going on you have players from your team that are representing the the, the country that have been called up for national team duties don't deny those players the opportunity to serve their country in the capacity of our national team. So I, I encourage you, management and staff of Port Loyola, to continue the season. Three points will not dictate where your season will go. The way you are playing right now, you are the best team in the PLB and there is no doubt about that. That's uh, totally correct. We are the best team so far. Uh, you know, things uh, don't usually go the way sometimes you expect, but you have to adapt to, to change. And, and they sit right there behind the San Pedro Pirates and they have progress up next. If uh, uh, Verde slips against altitude, you know, they can take that lead That's again. Correct. So, you know, let them continue play and, and, and show Belize that. You know, the Belize district is alive when it comes to uh, semi-pro football and that they can compete and take a championship back to the city. All right. With all that being said, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we will go into our BEBL half hour. We'll be back. Welcome back to TNC Sports tonight as we are in our BEBL segment. Let's take a look at the results from last weekend's game. And Hurricanes versus uh, Western Ballers, that game ended in the first quarter, 2 minutes and 38 seconds ago in the first quarter, 18 to 8. Uh, so Hurricanes picked up their fourth straight win. That game was played on... Friday night, yeah, correct, Friday night, and also on the 18th, uh, where you, you saw the Panthers hosted the uh, Defenders, and Panthers knocking off the Defenders, an upset, the first upset in the BEBL tournament, 87-82, and on February the 27th, down inside the Orange Walk Multipurpose Complex, Orange Walk with back-to-back -back wins as they uh, knock off the Belmapan Tigers 81 to 68 and Griga Dream Ballers defending their home turf inside the Russell Chisa Garcia Auditorium against the San Pedro Tiger Sharks came up with the win. Their second win in the in four weeks, 81-74 over the San Pedro Tiger Sharks. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from last weekend BEBL action as we move into the Civic Center. Interesting Civic Center where a lot of things has been happening in, inside the Civic Center. Here, you, you, 
Elvis Zoe Usher off the uh, tip, not, uh, nailing the three ball. So the game was very interesting up to that point. And then after a few minutes, it became a dunk fest. You saw Ian Rennie with the easy layup. Again, Ian Rennie with the layup, back-to-back -back layup for Ian Rennie to give uh, the Hurricanes the lead in the ball game seven to five. And then the dunk fest started. And that was uh, Lindsay Lopez with the easy layup. If you notice, three players on the court for, for Western Ballers. So at that juncture, Coach Juan had already pulled two players off the court in the likes of Molina and Ford. And the slam there from Chris Frazier as the lead continues to balloon 13 to 8 at that juncture, 8.23 to go in the first quarter. And, West, and Hurricane just continue to uh, pour it on, like I mentioned, up until 2.38 of the quarter. It get to a point where only one player was, was on the court for Western Ballers. Now, FIBA rules stipulates that you can start the game with five players, but you cannot end the game with only one player. And so when, when it got down to that point, that only one player for Western Ballers was on the court. The game had to be called by the officials. And you can see right there, the officials, they're talking it over. They're making a decision as what is going to happen. The only player at that juncture was Elvis Usher Jr. on the court for the Kaya Western Ballers. The game had to be called at that juncture, of the, at this juncture of the ball game. And so the Hurricanes, came up with their second win in 28, uh, 28 to 10. The score says 25, but it was 28 to 10 victory over the Kaya Western Ballers. And we'll, we'll go in depth into, um, you know, what took place. And I have so much that I want to share with you tonight when it comes to this game. But let's take a look at some more highlights as we move into the Russell Chise Garcia Auditorium where San Pedro Tiger Sharks coming off a win going up against the home team, Griga Dream Ballers. And right there you see Siego, the big man in the game with the drive and the layup. Siego had a big night for the Dream Ballers. And then it was... Right there, Siego again off the miss by Edgar Boogie Mitchell. He was very active in this ball game. Quinton Bowen from the free throw line extended nail his first jump shot of the first quarter and he was fouled and also went to the free throw line but the, the dynamic duo that really lift this game for uh griga dream ballers and we'll be getting to that was in the second half of the ball game when devon campbell came alive san pedro tried to stay close in this ball game but the griga dream ballers they were too much for the tiger sharks last week Saturday night. You saw Ashton Edwards nailing the three ball there. That, at that juncture, San Pedro Tiger Sharks up 28 to 21. So they had a lead in the first, uh, first half of this ball game. But the beautiful, the, the defensive play, the strong defensive play of the Griga Dream Ballers, who after settling down under coach Morgan, after he called a timeout, they settled down and they made a run against the San Pedro Tiger Sharks, which they never surrendered the lead after making that, that run. Jamal Kelly nailing the three ball. One of the bright spots for San Pedro in the ball game along with Arana, Francis Arana. And then Sego once again. Sego finished the game with a double-double. So it was a, it was a very good outing. For, for Siego. You saw Mitchell right there with the layup, and it was a one point lead at that juncture of the ball game. Arana stretched the lead to three points, making it 49 46. And then as we move forward to the fourth quarter, you see 66 61. Edgar Mitchell with the layoff to Siego, who went high for the slam, but it was Devon Campbell with back to back three pointer. This is one of them right here, the deep three ball. Nothing but net for Devon, for Devon Campbell. And then he came right back on the next possession. 
as he was, uh, the ball came to him from Sego and he nailed his second three-point ball and those three-point shots right there were the determining factor in the ball game. San Pedro never did recover after that and so Griga Dream Balls pull off the victory. Griga Dream Ballers pull off the victory in front of a jump pack. Russell Chester Garcia Auditorium to go two and two in week four of the BEBL basketball tournament. Other scores, as we take a look now at the standings, you see the Belize Hurricanes 4-0 with eight points sitting on top of the leaderboard. You have the defenders right there with seven points in second place. And then you have Dream Ballers, Western Ballers, Running Rebels, PG Panthers, Tiger Sharks, and the Red Tigers rounding out the top eight of the Young tournament, four weeks, so we'll be going into week five tournament. So let's take a look at the games that will be coming up for this weekend. So we have Hurricanes will be going up against Dream Ballers, a game that everyone anticipated that both teams would have been undefeated going into week number five. Not so. The only undefeated team in the BEBL is the Hurricanes, but it's still going to be a very interesting game. Now, I was made to understand that five players from the, from the defenders will be going on the injury list or are already on the injury list, and so it will be interesting to see how this one will play out. And then we have uh, the Red Tigers will be going up against Western Ballers. That game will be at the UB Gymnasium. Riga Dream Ballers will be hosting the PG Panthers, the back-to-back -back home games for the uh, Griga Dream Ballers, and they are poised to take this game from the PG Panthers. But remember, PG Panthers just came off a huge upset against the Defenders, so it will be one to watch. And the San Pedro Tiger Sharks will be going up against Running Rebels, and this, this game will be played in Orange Walk. And you see the time and the date right there. This game will be played in Orange Walk. I'm not sure if uh, Coach Rico Black and the San Pedro Tigers Hawks has worked out uh, something with the San Pedro High School to use their auditorium. But for now, it seems that all San Pedro games are road games. Recall the game, game that was played on Saturday night down in Dangriga that was supposed to have been played on the island of San Pedro. And so Coach Rico Black, he was forced to move his game to the Russell Chester Garcia auditorium so what we'll do we'll take a quick break and then when we come back we will be talking about the western ballers hurricane situation we'll be back welcome back as we are in the final segment of our show tonight but like i mentioned just before we went to break i want to tap into the western ballers hurricane situation uh, for, for a brief moment. I, I reached out to Coach Karim Juan uh, through Messenger and we arranged for him to be on the show tonight. This morning early I received a text message from Coach Juan informing me that he will not be making it to the show because one of his major sponsors um, advised him not to go to the media and so this is the reason why Coach Juan is not on the show tonight. But I want to go back to, to the preparation for the game. You know. Um, the fans, they came out. First of all, we must think about the fans because the fans, they are the one that, that sets the tone as to how your season will go when it comes to financing. And then I must talk about the food vendors, the people that not only prepare the food to be sold at the game, but also they rent their boot or whatever inside the Civic Center so that they could sell their food. That should have been taken into consideration by the Kaya Western Ballers. I'm not sure if they did. Then you have people that travel not only from Belize City. You had people that travel from Belmopan. People tra travel from Kamalote, who I know for a fact. I know that, that those people, they travel to the Civic Center. They not only travel, but it takes about $100 gas to, from Kamalote to Belize City and back. One, they had to rent room because they told me that they didn't want to travel back this, the night after the game, so they had to rent rooms. They had to buy food while they were in Belize City. So all of this um, had to be factored into decisions by team when you, when you are going to make decisions of this magnitude. Now the word out there is that they're saying, and even from within the BEBL family, they're saying that they think that it was a staged protest by the Kaya Western Ballers. I was made to understand that 
coach Karim Juan before he was instructed not to go to the media um, had already went to the media and stated that it wasn't a protest. It wasn't a staged protest. One, he said that the game was supposed to be played on Saturday, which he is right, but the game was moved back to Friday. Now, this was done on Wednesday, according to Coach Juan, when he was informed by the league that the game would have been played on Friday. He stated that several members of his team, and he didn't give a number, they are on the injured list. And so that is the reason why the entire team did not show up at the Civic Center. But what really stood out to me is that we know for a fact that Kieron Molina got injured in the first game. I was told that his injury would keep him out for three weeks. So he would be out for three weeks. But he was one of the players that showed up and was on the court to start the basketball game. So one would say, hmm, we all know he's injured. So then why was he put on the court? Well, like I told you, FIBA started to state that you must start the game with five players. And so he started the game. He didn't run, he didn't dribble, he didn't shoot. And at the next dead ball, Coach Juan called a timeout and removed him from the ball game. So at that juncture now, Western Baller is down to four players. Then Justin Ford was removed from the game again because of the fact, or they claim, I should say, that he was injured. I'm not sure about that, if he was injured or not. That is not for me to sit here and judge her. You know, but I'm just giving my opinion tonight as to what transpired and, 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 and hoping that we will not be seeing this type of situation for the rest of, of the season. It's very important. Anyhow, it got down to where only one player remained on the court and the referee had no choice but to call a basketball game. Again, that is by law. That is by law. That is not the referee decided, oh, all right, we have to call the game. No, that is in the FIBA statutes that you cannot finish a game with only one player. So everything to that point was good. It was good. Now, what is the league going to do about the situation? Because of all of what I mentioned in the beginning, the vendors, the fans, the advertisers, the, the companies that invest in the BEBL, sponsoring teams, you know, what will be done? Will there be a sanction for the Kaya Western Ballers? I am not sure. Nothing yet has been put out there. Or if it is out there, I, you know, I have no idea. So, Will we await the decision of the BEBL Ethics Committee or the Disciplinary Committee? And how long it will take for a press release to come out as to how the situation will be dealt with or have been dealt with? It's very important that we know this. We as media, we are here to promote and not to break down. I'm not here to break down Kaya Western Ballers, Coach Karim Juan and the management staff for what they did on Friday night. They showed up with five players. They started the game, but four quarters, they didn't complete four quarters. And so let's take into consideration the preparation that goes into a home game or an away game. Let's take into consideration teams. Let us not see this scenario played out again. The food vendors sell their food because it's a source of income. The team provides a bar to sell drinks, water and other uh, drinks because it's a source of income for the team. It's a way that the players, they are being paid. The fans that attend the game, they leave their home, the comfort of their home. They don't want to sit in their living room and watch the game in front of a television because they could have done that. The game was aired live on TNC. So they had the option to stay at home and watch the game. But they chose not to. 
They wanted to be in the arena to feel the energy and the atmosphere and to see the better team win in four quarters, not in two minutes and 38 seconds of the first quarter. So if we take all of this into consideration, and I hope that the, B, the BEBL is on the same page with me, taking all of what I said into consideration, and if they are going to levy um, some sort of punishment to the Kaya Western Ballers, will they take all of what I've said into account and to say, yes, this is a part of why we had to make the decision that we made. It's very important. And so we are looking forward to the game come Saturday night. We are looking forward to all games that will be played um, over the weekend. Let me mention, let me say that. But for the second time, we have a scenario inside the Belize Civic Center. First, it was with, uh, defenders, San Pedro Tiger Sharks, and one of the officials from the BEBL. The second time, Kaya Western Ballers, and Hurricanes, please don't let there be a third time. And I'm appealing to Hurricanes and the defenders, come out, suit your players up, play the game, and may the best team win. I know how important the game is to both teams, or are to both teams. One, the Hurricanes want to go 5-0 and oh, to set the stage and say we are the better team in the city. The defenders want to bounce back of the loss to the PG Panthers to say that we are right here with you. You are not going nowhere, Hurricanes, because the truth is those are the two teams that have shown that they are ready to go to the big dance. It's early. Things could change, but the number speaks for itself. And I'm only talking because of the numbers. They have shown that they could go to the big dance, meaning the championship. They could make the, the semifinals and go on to the championship. And so I am appealing to both clubs tonight. Please show up. Come Saturday night, Friday night. Show up to the Civic Center and let the game play. Let the fans enjoy the BEBL, the highest level of basketball that is being played here in our country. Let the fans have their moments. Remember, there are kids that go to the game also. And the kids, you know what the kids they are doing now? They are, start, they are starting to idolize our players. You know, it's not LeBron James anymore. It's not Seth Curry anymore. You know, you're hearing kids now saying that they want to be like this Belizean player. They want to be like Edgar Mitchell. You know, they want to be like Lindsay Lopez. They want to be like Akeem Waters. And the list goes on. The list goes on. So, you know, come out, let us play. On that note, I want to say it was a pleasure to be in studios with you tonight, but I want to leave you with this Bible verse before I go. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you. Have a good night. We'll be back here next week, Tuesday. Bye.